Hey, Mirror Chapel, it is time for our October Spur on Focus. And in October, it is the Red Cross, those awesome frontline workers. We will be supporting them in three important ways. First, we will be sending out a prayer chart so that we can pray specifically for them every single day of the week. So look out for that. Number two, we will be writing words of encouragement, notes of encouragement. So you can write a note and turn it to the office and then we will forward it to them. And third, a way that we are going to be supporting them, the youth and the children are going to take care of this. And that is the youth are going to go out and buy supplies to fill flood buckets to help flood victims. And then our children's ministry is going to put those buckets together and get them to the Red Cross. So let's do all that we can to support the Red Cross in October. Thank you so much for your support. Mark your calendars for Saturday, October 30th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. for our fall festival. There will be games and fun and food for the whole family, all outdoors. Come dressed to impress in your Halloween costume, and we'll see you there. Hi, are you a parent of a small child? Then this announcement is for you. Families in Faith Sunday School class has just begun. In the first meeting, we said that we want this class to focus on building relationships with each other, gaining a biblical perspective on parenting well, and of course, funny stories that come with parenting. So if you are a parent of a small child, this class is for you. It's Sundays, mornings from 10, 10 to 11 o'clock in the library. We are starting off going through uh, the art of parenting, aiming your child's heart to God. And so we hope that you join us. We're excited and this is a place for you. See you Sunday mornings at 1010 in the library. Attention kindergarten through fifth grade kids and their parents. If you missed the first few weeks of our drum and chime circle, it's not too late to join the fun. This month we'll be starting rehearsing for our kids Christmas play. Miss Laurie Hollenbeek is gonna be help leading a play I'm gonna be doing the chimes and drums and we're gonna put it together into a great program for Christmas. That will be Sunday, December 12th. Any child in kindergarten through fifth grade is welcome to join us on Sunday evenings at 5 p.m. as we play drums and prepare for our Christmas program. It's not too late to get in on the fun. We hope to see you Sunday at five. Beginning Sunday, October 3rd, some of our Sunday morning activities have a new time. Our new Sunday morning activity times are 8.30, traditional worship in the sanctuary, 9.15, the bridge at 3.14 in the gym, 10.10, Sunday school, 11.10, Sunday celebration in the sanctuary. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Muir's Chapel. Let's stand as we join in our call to worship together. Um, the first verse is going to be sung by the choir. Verse two, it's all about the ladies. Ladies, if you'll sing verse two. Men, if you'll do verse four. And then we'll all join back together for verse five of Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. That's number 57 in your hymnals. Let's worship together.
and welcome to worship. We are glad you're worshiping with us this morning. We especially welcome, welcome our online viewers as well and any guests that are watching online. Please feel free to click the link in the video description or the, or the code and um, find out a little bit more about the church or request a newsletter, but we are glad you're worshiping with us. Let us pray. Lord, open our spirits to receive your spirit today. Open our hearts to your grace and to each other. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 159 in your hymnal, Lift High the Cross. Let's sing together.
children are invited to come forward for the children's message while everyone passes the peace of Christ with a friendly word or wave. So the first thing we need to do is to wave to all of our online viewers or anybody else that's online, wave and say hi, some of your friends that are out there. All right, so we've been talking about fogging the world and how God faults the world with forgiveness and love and all of that. So today we're turning it around and, and saying that God wants us to fog the world. He wants us to fog the world with goodness and kindness and grace. And have you ever heard of paying it forward? Have you ever heard that saying, paying it forward? It's, it started, it's a way of doing kindness, and you keep the kindness going. So let's say you're, what's your favorite fast food? McDonald's, Burger King, what do y'all like? Chick-fil-A? What's your favorite? You're not sure. All right. All right, so let's say you're in the line at Chick-fil-A, and um, you pay for the person in front of you. You pay for their meal or whatever. You pay for the person behind you. You pay for the person behind you, and then that person pays for the person behind them, and that person pays for the person behind them. So you're not turning it around, and you pay for somebody, and they pay for you. You're paying it forward to, to another person. A new person's getting it. Does that make sense? All right, so like if you do an act of kindness to somebody, um, they're not turning around and doing an act of kindness to you. Instead, they're, they're passing it on and doing an act of kindness to somebody else. But it always comes back. You're right. You're very wise for your age. All right. It does always come back to you. But you want to keep it going to new people. So there's a game called Play It Forward, not just Pay It Forward. And these are some cards from the game that I'm going to give you all. You can take a couple of them. And it gives you ideas. So pull a couple out for you to take and do this week. All right. Take a few to take and do. All right. And so I want you to pay it for. Do whatever it tells you on there. Or you might find something creative. And I think our online people can find these um, in their description as well. So you decide to do something for somebody else. And then you give them the card and encourage them to do that same thing for another person. So they're not going to turn around and do it for you. They're going to do that same thing for somebody else. So you're going to play it forward or pay it forward. Does that make sense? Those are cool. That's good. So, so y'all want to work on those this week? That's your assignment for the week. That's our assignment for our kids. So let's have a prayer. Gracious God, thank you for loving us, for showering us with goodness and kindness. Help us to shower and fog others with good and kindness every day. Amen. Thank you, guys. Our hymn for reflection is in your bulletin. If you flip over the page to page four, we're going to sing together, They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love. Um, either stand or sit however you're comfortable, but be in a posture of worship as we sing together.
And as we turn now to our prayer time, I do remind our online viewers that if you have a, a prayer request, you can use the code on the screen or, or click the link, and we will pray for those requests um, during our staff meeting um, as, as the week comes up. So please feel free to turn in your prayer request. Our prayers this morning are going to include a thank you for the staff. I've kind of dedicated this morning's message to our staff. Um, who have truly fogged the world, showered the world with their goodness and their grace in so many ways. So I'm so grateful for each of them. So that our prayer this morning will be a thanksgiving for them. Um, in the hospital this week, we've had Margaret Brown. She did have a broken hip. She had hip surgery. She is out of the hospital and in rehab now. So we need to keep Margaret Brown in our prayers. Um, Continue to keep those that I know you've been praying for faithfully and daily and they still need it as their ongoing treatments for Donna and Monica and Howard and Jackie and Rudy and Nancy. Rudy's here today. We're glad. Um, but just um, know that they have ongoing things and we just want to keep them surrounded and embraced and lift up in prayer and know how much we love you because we love you so much. And our... Um, Altar flowers today, I did want to take note of those. They are quite beautiful. They are dedicated um, to the glory of God and given in love and memory of Frank Johnson, um, Ellen Hopkins' father, who passed away in, in October of 2010. So we thank you for the flowers, and our choir is going to call us to prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, first of all, we just thank you because you are a God of grace and love and goodness and hope and joy and peace. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for every moment, every day, every breath, every step, for life itself. Thank you for the renewable ongoing spiritual resources, O oh Lord. Not only are you God of hope and love and joy and peace, but you want to give us a living hope and grace. You want to fill us and grow within us generosity and goodness and faithfulness and kindness. These are the renewable resources you pour out on us and sustain us with day in and day out. We thank you for them. We ask that indeed you grow them in each of us, O oh Lord, that we will be growing in all of these qualities, that you will equip us and fill us, that indeed the world can know you through our love. So fill us with your very spirit. Thank you for going before us. Thank you for life and love and healing. Lord, I thank you this morning that I am privileged to work alongside a staff that is so absolutely amazing that they give their gifts and their graces and their service and their fresh ideas and their creativity and, and they pour it out on everybody here and on this community. So I thank you for each and every one of them. I pray your blessing on their families. I pray for their health and, and just surrounding them and holding them each and every day. And Lord, we look around our world right now and we see how much that goodness needs to be showered out into the world. And so we come again as your people praying for the entire world. Praying, O oh Lord, for forgiveness for our own sins that we are not yet the people we need to be. And we're not yet the church that you call us to be. That we will dig deeper and become more open to you working and growing us that we will struggle more with how to break the cycles of poverty, that we will be trying to be agents of reconciliation where there is brokenness. Lord, we pray that you will change us where we need to be changed, and we confess our sins before you. And we come into a world that's broken, O oh Lord, and we pray that your goodness win the battle over evil, over terrorism, over feuds that have hardened into hatred, over places in the world, O oh Lord, that have known so much violence they've hardly had even a moment's pause from it. 
that you will raise up peacemakers, that you will convict and convert hearts, that your power of goodness will shine over and defeat the powers of evil that still hold way too much sway. So strengthen and grow us and use us to be those forces for good in the world. Lord, we pray for those near and dear to us. Maybe we haven't lift them up by name, but we're lifting them up in our hearts right now. Neighbors, friends, co-workers, lovers, people that we know are struggling, our, our spouses, our children, um, anybody that we know that is struggling right now with a decision, with hardships, with brokenness, with lostness. We pray for each and every one, O oh Lord, for your healing to be manifest where they most need it in their lives. We pray for healing right now for Margaret, continued healing for Patsy. We pray for Nancy and Rudy and Howard and Jackie and Donna and Monica. We pray, O oh Lord, that they feel you so close every moment and that you're working through every resource, every avenue, connecting them to the best resources for their healing. And Lord, we pray that you continue to multiply the resources needed around the world, those renewable spiritual resources, but exponentially multiply the practical resources as well, whether it is still the need for vaccines or ventilators, whether it's the need for homes, jobs. Lord, you know that the needs go on and on and on. So multiply exponentially those resources and help us to be a part of that multiplication process. Grant wisdom to our leadership on ways to rebuild and help so many, O oh Lord, to come out of not just a pandemic, but out of cycles and generations of poverty and hardship. So Lord, draw us closer to you and help us to be your people. And trusting in you, we pray the prayer you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Oh, 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 oh,
You can turn in your bulletins to the scripture this morning. They're following along with our theme, our Spur on 2021 theme this morning. Starting with Hebrews 10. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. 1 Corinthians 12. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. Proverbs 27, iron sharpens iron, and one person sharpens the wits of another. And 1 Peter 4, above all, maintain constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, speak through me. If necessary, speak in spite of me. And always speak beyond me. Amen. So before I get started, the first thing that I want to do is for those of you who are worshiping with us in person to turn around to the sound booth, and I'm going to ask Brian to wave, all right? Turn around to the sound booth there. <laughs> all right. Several folks have recently asked where Brian is on Sunday mornings. Now, Brian's our director of youth and discipleship, and he used to give the children's time, and he used to read the scriptures, um, but he has a new job description now. We've written into his job description that he is live streaming our worship service. So the reason you don't see him up here is because he's back there. He's not been playing hooky. I promise you he's not been playing hooky. Um, it is one of many new tasks that he is taking on during the pandemic. I am privileged this Sunday to spend a few minutes expressing gratitude to a staff who leads the way in giving and serving, in fulfilling the very scripture passages we read this morning. They spur each other on to good works. They recognize that we're a part of the body of Christ, that we're a community meant to build up one another. They bring fresh ideas. They collaborate. They demonstrate courage. So all of the scriptures this morning allude to something essential, something essential for us to be healthy, whether we're talking about family units, communities, businesses, churches, nations, humanity itself. We need to be team players, all parts working together. The imagery of the church as a body has deep spiritual implications for life itself. Simply put, a body doesn't work well when one part checks out for a few years. You know, anybody here that's been sick, and most everybody here has been sick at one point or another, knows that when something's not working right, everything else feels a little bit out of kilter. Most of you know that I'm dealing with sciatic nerve pain before, I'm not, right now, and I've not dealt with that before, and it puts everything else out of kilter. Somebody was telling me the other day that they had broken their big toe, and I was thinking, well, that's not really that big a deal. And then they were explaining that the big toe contributes to your balance and that when you don't have your your big toe that truly you're out of balance everything's not just right it throws the body out of balance so this imagery of a body implies that we belong to each other and it can't be a one-sided affair we each have responsibilities and functions and contributions to make and when we don't make them everybody suffers so in the business world, the qualities desired in a team player is a long list. They include being a good communicator, a positive attitude, being patient, reliable, trustworthy, forgiving. Brian is all of these things, so I'm saying thank you to Brian this morning. Brian's job description during the pandemic has been ever evolving. This summer, you would find Brian driving the bus for the Sun Fun Gang. That's our children, K through five, taking them to their fun outings throughout the summer. Recently, I thought I was just starting a conversation at a worship meeting about our need for a new Sunday school class, and Brian just said, oh, I can do that. You know, not even a second thought, oh, I can do that. You know, Brian's positive attitude, willingness to help, 
Keeping a spirit of hope and moving forward, it's contagious. And it's truly helpful for me. You know, our theme scripture for 2021 is that Hebrews 10, let us spur one another on to love and good deeds. And Brian has been a key player in spurring us on. Now this morning I chose to, to read that, that Hebrews passage from the NRSV instead of the NIV. So this morning we read it like this. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. That use of the verb provoke, um, as opposed to spur on, just emphasizes its importance. Think about it. In order to provoke somebody, you've got to be engaged with them. You know, you gotta, you gotta, it's almost has an edge of intrusion about it, you know. You know, if you're going to provoke somebody, you're going to be involved in their lives. You're going to kind of be in their face. But it's in a good way. We're meant to be a community, a team. Paul was saying in this passage that the people must gather for support and encouragement. That the gift of Christ is not something we keep to ourselves. It's for the building up of the whole body. So I included the scripture from Proverbs this morning because it contains that same sort of meaning. Iron sharpens iron, and one person sharpens the wits of another. See, God designed life for us to bring out the best in each other. You know, if you've got that person that sometimes rubs you the wrong way, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes they're helping you to grow a little bit. So God designed life so that we all complement and bring out the best in each other. Now, I also want to thank Allison Ludeman for being a team player today. When you see her in the office or you come by the church, she's one of the first persons you see. Tell her thank you. I like to think of Allison as our glue. She holds us all together. You know, one of the top qualities identified for a team player is that the individual should be a good communicator. Well, Allison plays a strong role in connecting all of us through communication. And yes, it's these bulletins, and it's the voice you get out, and it's the mass emails, and it's the Facebook post, and um, all of those things. She juggles all that, the sign out front. But she does so much more than that. She sees the things around the church that need to be accomplished. She notices the things that are left undone, and she reminds, and she nudges. Sometimes she provokes. She doesn't let important things fall through the cracks. She is absolutely essential. I don't know what we'd do without her. But I don't want to stop there because Allison has also mastered the love and good deeds portion of the Hebrew scripture. Allison not only doesn't let important things fall through the cracks, but she tries really hard to never let people fall through the cracks. So she plays a key role in meal trains or making sure that prayer shawls find themselves wrapped around the right person at the right time or that you get your worship CD every week, or you get a phone call. Allison has an incredible heart. I am very grateful to work beside her. But she doesn't handle the office alone. We're a team. Sandy's a part of that glue, holding everything together. Sandy's our finance person. And she does make sure that every penny is accounted for. You had better have your receipt. All of us have learned that the hard way, and you want this. You want this in your person that handles your finances. She's detail-oriented, she's quite exact, and you want that for the person that's handling your finances. But she also helps with the communication. When Allison can't do something, then she just jumps right in, and she does it. And she makes sure the cards get sent. And she's a whole lot more than that. When I first came to Mears Chapel, some years ago now, pre-pandemic, when we could still have lots of parties and more food and everything else, I remember coming into staff meeting one Tuesday morning, and all of a sudden my table was being filled up with a complete feast, a homemade feast, one dish after another after another, and then a homemade cheesecake and homemade cookies, and I'm like, what is going on here? Well, it was somebody's birthday. I hadn't even realized it. It wasn't mine, but it was another staff member's. And pre-pandemic, if you worked at Mears Chapel, Sandy would see that you got the birthday party of a lifetime. She never missed that. And she went home that night before and cooked all of that food and brought it the next day. She is filled with compassion. We know she has lots of her animals. She's filled with compassion for animals, for those who struggle, those who are ill. And it doesn't matter if they're friend or stranger. If somebody's upset or in need, she's concerned about that. 
her compassion touches many. And before I leave this team player theme, I want to talk about two new team members who onboarded during the middle of a pandemic, Blake and Kenny. Now, I imagine that some people listening today have changed jobs during the pandemic. It is a chaotic, crazy time to make that transition. Can you imagine if you're totally online, you're not going in in person at all, and you're trying to get to know your coworkers? I mean, in a Zoom meeting or a computer meeting, you just don't get to know somebody the same way. You don't have those same team building exercises and you, you're not really sure maybe what your expectations are. So it's hard to onboard during the middle of a pandemic in a new job. It's a difficult thing. We quickly learned, however, that Kenny, our new accompanist, um, has got that team player gene. He is a natural team player. He came on to start on as our 8.30 and 11, but pretty soon the praise team needed him and he just jumped right in. I didn't even know he could sing until one Sunday morning I was hearing this beautiful voice and I looked around I'm like who is that singing and he was singing into the microphone you know over over the piano um, he filled in for Lauren and part of her roles when she was growing her family um, Kenny brings his a game all the time helpful jump right in optimistic we are blessed to have Kenny on board with us we are blessed to have Kenny Blake, our new facilities manager, if you haven't met him, I hope everybody has by now, also came in during the middle of this pandemic, really right when the pandemic was started. But in particular, I want to lift out something different with Blake. He has demonstrated two qualities in a powerful way that are lessons for all of us. Courage and perseverance. See, he not only started a new job, he had never been a facilities manager before. So he had to learn a brand new job. But he and Becky were blessed with their miracle baby Clark in the middle of everything else. Blake has had to make adjustment after adjustment after adjustment, learning how to be a dad for the very first time, but not just a dad of any child, a dad of Clark. So going back and forth to the hospital, learning how to care for Clark. It takes a lot of faith to keep smiling, showing up, being able to concentrate in the midst of so much adversity. So Blake has demonstrated a great deal of courage and perseverance. Courage in the midst of challenges also applies to Kim Hastings, our play school director and children's minister. If you have been keeping up with the child care crisis, you realize that everyone who works in this area is facing challenges unlike anything in the past. Diane Barker, executive director of a child care association, was quoted, parents are looking for child care, but now it's this catch-22. We don't have the staff, so we can't open the classrooms, so families can't go back to work because they can't find child care. The hiring situation is more dire in child care right now than in almost any other field. And there are a lot of reasons for that. There is low pay, so a lot of people that used to work in child care have gone to positions as bank tellers or administrative assistants. Others simply can't go back to work because of their own child care situation, and they don't have child care for their own children. And it is a part of a crisis, and it's a part of a crisis that's going to hold back the whole recovery from the pandemic. Because without enough employees, daycares are turning away children, leaving parents unable to return to work. So Kim has been caught up in the middle of this crisis. And in spite of that, she's kept our stellar standards as a play school. She's worked diligently to have enough teachers and to keep all of the children safe. She was one of the first to reopen and be a frontline worker. And she had to make those grueling decisions day after day about hygiene and safety and when to close and when to stay open. So she too has demonstrated courage and perseverance. She too has kept going day in and day out. And I want you to remember that this is an ongoing everyday act of courage because even now she has a great deal of difficulty even finding a substitute teacher, much less a new teacher, which makes it difficult to grow the play school back to its original size. Our staff is just amazing. It has been such a joy and powerful vision of God at work in the world to see so much courage and innovation and compassion and dedication and strength and positivity from our staff, from many of you, our congregation members, from the people out in the world. 
the outward talents and skills and the inner spiritual qualities have been developing and blooming all around us. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to develop and grow all of that in us. And Lauren is a shining example of this. Pre-pandemic, I think all of us already knew that Lauren is highly skilled and she's incredibly talented as a musician. And she possesses an amazing creative streak. Um, every day I'm just kind of blown away by that. But the depth of her talent and the depth of her creativity is now more known to all of us because all of those edited online worship services that we had for more than a year, Lauren pulled those together, children, videos, announcements, in, in a, a wonderful, entertaining, thematic way, but in a way that drew us into worship. Now, maybe Lauren had all those editing skills before this started. I just didn't know about them. But now I know that they're fully developed, and she's quite an expert at it, and she freely and willingly gave them to us. You know, Lauren offers so much because she offers herself. She shares her gifts and her creativity freely. She consistently brings something to the table, and you can count on her. I'm not, I know that I'm not the only one here that owes Lauren a special gratitude for offering morning prayer. During much of the pandemic, she would come on Facebook and offer a time of morning prayer. And I can remember several mornings when I was feeling pretty dry myself, and I was having a hard time praying, and I said, okay, I'm, go I'm going to go pray with Lauren. And God used Lauren to help reconnect me to his power. Our mission is to help people draw closer to God, to connect in loving ways with each other, to connect resources with needs. Lauren does all three of these beautifully. Our scripture from Corinthians today emphasizes that the gift of Christ is not one that we receive and keep to ourselves, but it's meant for the building up of the whole body. We are to freely offer and use our gifts for others. You know, Lauren's doing that with the drum and chime choir right now. She not only just brings all of herself, but she brings fresh ideas in, for collaboration in the kingdom of God. That's what we're all called to be doing. When Paul used the imagery of the body for the church, he was portraying a radical diversity of gifts, all necessary, all meant to complement each other, and all for the common good. Truly, every one of you is needed. Your personality is in demand. Your fresh ideas are welcomed. Your collaboration is valued. Humor is a rare and precious commodity. Your optimism is needed. Your hope gives breath and life. Your encouragement of others is needed. Your ability to listen is needed. Your hopefulness is life-giving. The time you take to offer a hand of help can change not only somebody's day or somebody's week, but it can even change their entire outlook. Your family needs you. Your neighborhood needs you. Your place of work needs you. Your church needs you. Humanity needs you. We don't need anybody to check out. We need everybody to be all in. God has made each one indispensable to the whole, hand, foot, ear, eye, and we each have an essential role. We can't ever be spectators. We are to provoke one another to love and good deeds, sharpen each other, value each other, maintain constant love for each other, and serve one another with whatever gift you have received. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn today is number 430. O oh, Master, let me walk with thee. Would you stand or sit however you're comfortable as we close our time of worship?
And may we each and all go out and fog the world with goodness and kindness and generosity and graciousness that we might give hope and life and help and peace to others. Amen.